Number 38. A football quarterback is moving straight backward at a speed of 2 meters per second when he throws a pass to a player 18 meters straight downfield. Letter A. If the ball is thrown at an angle of 25 degrees relative to the ground and it is caught at the same height as it, uh, as it was released, what is the initial speed relative to the ground? All right. So this first part of the problem could be a little confusing uh, because they say that he is moving backward at two meters per second. And now he throws the ball and we might think to ourselves, well, that must play into the calculation somehow and whatnot, but it actually doesn't. All right. And the reason why it doesn't. So first, let's take a look at the picture I drew. All right. So in order to cover the distance of 18 meters, right, the ball is going to be passed at an angle of 25 degrees above the horizontal. It's going to have some initial velocity imparted to it. So the bottom line is this. In order for the ball here to cover this distance of 18 meters, there has to be, and at this angle, there's only one velocity that this ball must obtain. Okay, and that's it. There isn't two velocities or three, there's only one velocity, all right? The difference though is that since the quarterback is moving backward, now the question doesn't ask for this, but since the quarterback is moving backward, his initial, the ball's initial speed is technically negative two meters per second, right? And then if he wants to throw the ball, let's just say this answer works out to be 15, Okay, if he now needs to throw the ball at a speed of 15 meters per second at this angle, he has to accelerate his arm more than if he were stationary. Why? Because he needs to take the ball's uh, velocity from being negative 2 to 15, which means he would have had to have changed the ball's velocity by 17 meters per second if he were moving backwards. That would be now a greater acceleration because I'm assuming it would happen in the same amount of time. Whereas if he were stationary, this is not negative two anymore, it's zero, and now he has to get the ball to go from zero to 15 meters per second, so now he only has a change in velocity of 15 as opposed to 17, all right? So uh, just to clarify that before we get into it, uh, just in case you were wondering, so that, that has nothing to do with the problem, all right? So uh, first, let's take a look at letter A. All right, we want to calculate the initial velocity. So what are we given? We're given an angle and we're given a range. Almost sounds like there's not enough information, but there is. Take a look at the problem here on the right-hand side I just boxed. That, um, not problem, I meant formula. That formula is wonderful because it just relates three things. It relates the total range an object travels, the initial velocity of that object, and the angle at which it was released. Okay, wonderful formula. So here, the range was 18.0 meters. The initial velocity is what we're looking to find. And the angle he released it at was 25 degrees. Okay, wonderful. And G, remember, is 9.80. So now let's just do a cross multiplication. So 18 times 9.8 is 176. So we get 176 is equal to VI squared times the sine. Well, let me just do that too, right? I'll just calculate... Do sine of um, sine of two times twenty five, which is really the sine of fifty. So that works out to be uh, zero point seven six six, and then just divide out the zero point seven six six from both sides. Zero point seven six six. Right now we get v i squared is equal to one seventy one seventy six over point seven six six. So we get a value of now. <clears throat> 220, 230, if I consider rounding to six figs, take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. And now we find that the initial velocity should be second square root of 230. And we get a value of 15.2. So 15.2 meters per second. That is the initial velocity that the ball must be released at in at an angle, I should say, of 25 degrees. So we now know this answer. So it's 15.2 meters per second. Great. So that's letter A. Let's take a look at now letter B. It says, how long does it take to get to the receiver? So in terms of time now, what's most important is we know it has to cover a distance of 18 uh, or displacement of 18 meters, right? But now, what does that distance represent? What, uh, what coordinate is that in? Well, it's an X coordinate, right? So I must be thinking about now X coordinates to solve for this time, all right? So let's see what we know. Um, we know the displacement, that's equal to 18.0 meters. 
We know the acceleration in the X frame in this problem is zero because essentially it's free fall and there's no acceleration in the X frame. We know that the initial velocity should therefore then be the same as the final velocity. Okay, great, and we don't know the time. So it looks like I gotta focus on this part, finding the initial or final velocity. Now remember, we just found the resultant of the initial velocity. So can I now simply solve for the X component of that initial velocity, right? I'll call that VIX. Yeah, we just do some trigonometry, right? So in order to solve for that X component, remember I know this angle, I know the hypotenuse, and I'm looking for the side adjacent, therefore I'm going to use cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 25 will equal now the VIX over the 15.2 we just found. So the initial velocity in the X direction should simply be cosine 25 times 15.2, and we get a value of 13.8, 13.8, that's meters per second. Now that is my initial in the X, therefore it's also my final, and therefore <laughs> it's also the average. So to figure out now the time, we can simply use the average velocity formula is equal to the displacement over time, easy peasy. So what's the average? Uh, the average velocity here was 13.8, right, meters per second. That's going to equal now the 18.0 meters it traveled and now divided by time. So simply just switch the numerator, numerator and denominator. So now we get 13.8 and just solve now. So it's 18 divided by 13.8 and that works out to be 1.30. So the time is 1.30. That's how long it's gonna be in the air. Great, now let's take a look at the last question. So letter C, what is its maximum height above its point of release? All right, so to figure out the maximum height, take a look at this formula down here at the bottom. This is a nice formula. It tells us the maximum height. All we need to know is the initial velocity in the y direction. So going back to the picture over here, what I'm gonna draw is I'm gonna draw my initial y vector there, right, for the, that represents the initial velocity in the y direction. That's what I now need to solve before I answer this question. So how do I do that? I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. Therefore, I'm going to use sine. So sine of theta is equal to the initial velocity. Well, let me just say this first is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of now 25 will equal the initial velocity in the y direction divided by 15.2. So the initial velocity in the y direction will be, so simply do sine of 25 times 15.2. We get a value of 6.42. So 6.42, and that's meters per second. Great. Now what I can do is use my maximum height formula. The maximum height in Y is equal to the initial velocity in the Y direction squared divided by now two times G. So the maximum height in the Y direction should be equal to 6.42 squared all over two times 9.80. It's not negative anymore because they're talking about G. G is always positive, all right? So now it becomes 6.42 squared divided by two times 9.8 careful with your parentheses there, and I get a maximum height now of 2.1, 2.1 meters. And that takes care of letter C. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.